Hey pals, welcome to a new video. Today, I wanted to give something back to you. We are very fortunate to be crossing the 50,000 sub mark here on the channel very soon. And so I wanted to do some kind of a giveaway and also make a video about something that gets brought up quite a lot on the channel for YouTube and in, in Twitch uh, that relates to pixel art and art in general. And that is the topic of graphics tablets, art tablets. So this is a welcome into a small, I just bought this uh, a couple of days ago. And I wanted to do like an unboxing, a review, a comparison with a cheaper tablet and a more expensive tablet. And uh, yeah, give you my verdict for art, you know, for pixel art, is something like this worth it? Uh, what should you go for if you're starting out? All that kind of stuff. At the end of the video, we'll do some kind of giveaway and uh, I'll explain how to go into the running for that. So here we have the tablet. Uh, it's a little scuffed. I don't know what's going on with the packaging here, but it came like this. Um, so that's life. Uh, straight out the gate, we have these little plastic bits here. They're always fun to take off. Get into that. There we go. Nothing else in the box. So here we have the tablet itself. Very nice. We have a pen. The pen's got a couple of buttons. It's got a nib and I believe a changeable little pocket there. This uh, doesn't feel as premium as the others, but it does have a rubberized kind of feel. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this would be just fine to use every day. Let's move on. What else do we have? User manual and uh, our lovely cable. So this tablet doesn't have a battery. It just comes with the cable and you use the cable when you use it. Uh, the cable is a USB, uh, I believe that's called a micro USB. It's just uh, what you would have used to charge your phone before USB-C if you have a non-iPhone. You can see there what the shape of that is. Let's move on back to the tablet itself. So the tablet is pretty small size. So how does it feel? It's very light, super light. Got four buttons. They don't go very deep, but they have a nice click to them. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, this little tab here to hide the pen in, and we're done. I actually really like this, and uh, mine, my Pro doesn't have this, so you can always just store this here. And reasonably clear area. So you can see, if I bring this closer to the camera, these little dots, these represent the drawable space, which is kind of different from, um, you know, older Intuos tablets. This is my 2013 Intuos Pro, and, um, you would think that the drawing area starts where it becomes more um, shiny and less matte. And uh, that's not true. The actual drawing area starts where these little uh, lights are. So if I bring this and place it over the top, you can actually see that the drawing area is almost identical, right? They are functionally the same in terms of the size. This has just got much less hardware around the outside. So here it is again, just a quick look at the whole product. You can tell it's already picking up a couple of fingerprints, but I don't really mind. I mean, I'm gonna be touching this a lot. So uh, that's the size compared to my head. It's pretty small, uh, but I personally prefer smaller tablets. Let's plug this in and we'll give it a go. So once I got started, I plugged in the little tablet and uh, it didn't work out the gate. It wasn't a plug and play device. Uh, I kind of suspected this because uh, in previous, you know, tablets that I've used, you have to install the drivers first. This didn't come with any kind of uh, disc or anything like that. Uh, I went to the Wacom website and found out that I had to download this um, Wacom desktop driver, basically like an aggregator for all of the drivers. And uh, that's okay. Can we get this from Wacom Desktop Center? Let's see if we can get it working. Anything? No. I think I'm gonna have to do a restart, so we'll come back in a sec and review. We're back after a quick restart. Uh, I turned on Wacom Desktop Center, plugged in my little device, and this little window came up. So let's just make our way through this. All done. Okay, so presumably this should just work now. Uh, right now it's mapped across all of my screens. So half of the distance of the tablet goes the full length of my main monitor, and then it goes over into the next monitor. I don't want that. So let's see if I can change the settings pretty quickly. Okay, this is just the Wacom tablet properties. I've already got a version of this um, installed because I use the Pro. So this is pretty straightforward into us S. Okay, screen monitor one, hooray, that's it. First tests out the gate. The Intuos Pro Small from 2013 or whatever that I use normally is a, a much less grippy feel to it. So this is very grippy. It, it doesn't feel glossy at all. It feels quite textured. 
um, which is different. I'm going to see if any of the other nibs make any difference here, but I have a feeling they won't. I think this is actually the surface itself. Yep, they're all the same. So this is just the way that it is. Okay, interesting. I'll be honest, I, I'm probably going to find that a bit of an adjustment. So I have some work that I was doing here, just a bit of a test. I had a reference and I just wanted to see if I could get something started and then work on it with the other uh, tablets that I'm going to try today. So uh, if I just get to work, I mean, it feels pretty much the same. Pretty much what I'm used to. Um, if I just do like a bit of a drawing here, I mean, here we're at uh, a thousand. And I mean, I can see the different levels. I, I don't, I'm pretty sure this is like software bound, right? So if I just do, we'll do a bit of a test with three different ones here. So this, so this is the Wacom, the small. So this is the pro small, oh, basically the same. In fact, I would say, yeah, effectively identical. This model cost me a few hundred dollars when I first bought it. Okay, last but not least, or maybe least, I have the Huion 420. This is the absolute cheapest uh, tablet that I think I could buy. And to be honest with you, the curve is not as linear. Yeah, I would say that's probably the biggest weakness of this one is that the curve is, it ramps up quite exponentially. If I can increase my pressure more carefully. Oh, it has quite a dead zone in the middle there. If you're a serious artist, I probably wouldn't recommend this. So just to give you some visual context, this is the Huion 420. This is a $40 tablet. This is very cheap and it comes from China and uh, the build quality is really not great. Um, but I mean, physically it does the job. It has a nice pen here and the pen has a rubberized texture here. It's got two buttons, just like the uh, both Intuos tablets here. It's got an off switch uh, right here as the eraser. So you can actually disable the pen. Uh, this one notably runs on AAA batteries. So I've never had to replace the battery, but I've only used it for, you know, maybe a dozen hours or so. Uh, the, the technology is much cheaper, most definitely. But results on the screen, to be honest with you, are comparable. I mean, I'm sure I could do my best work on this. It would take a bit longer, but I could definitely do it. Uh, so if you're on a super duper budget, the, the Huion 420 uh, is their cheapest option. Obviously they have more premium products, but for 40 bucks, I mean, there's that. Then there is the 2019 or 2020 into a small. So that's the one we're testing today. And uh, I would say this one for a hundred dollars is definitely bang for your buck. I mean, just playing around with it now, it's clearly clearly much, much closer in quality and, you know, feel to my Intuos Pro small. This one here is lacking a few bells and whistles compared to the Intuos Pro, just, just for parity's sake. The Intuos Pro small from, this is again, like from 2013. So they've, you know, slightly changed the design since then. This comes with a pen. The pen has an eraser tip. So you can actually do, you know, erasing on the other side. Not that I spend too much time doing that, uh, but it is something that you can do. It has a pen, uh, like a paperweight, which you can then use to dock the pen in. And underneath Jurassic Park style, we have uh, the extra nibs. And there are a whole bunch of different textures here that you can use. Personally, I would say these are probably on the gimmick side of things. I've only ever used the one nib that, uh, that came with the pen here and uh, yeah I mean that's that's just the way it is so this was a hundred dollars Australian this was about 350 I think when I bought it uh, both of them use batteryless technology on the actual pens themselves uh, neither of them require any recharging or anything like that this version does not have a battery inside of the tablet but this one does so this one again was all the rage when uh, when it came out so this version uh, can be powered by the uh, USB mini and it also has a battery with a wireless receiver. So let me show you here If you pull this back, you get this little guy um, And this plugs in and makes it wireless to be honest with you. This has never worked for me six months ago I tried it and it did work 
but the battery lasted like 20 minutes. So I think, you know, over time, obviously the, the battery on the inside after many cycles, every time you plug it in, it recharges that battery. It only has a certain life cycle. To me, it's a big gimmick because like I'm sitting at my computer anyway, <laughs> like I have a USB handy, it's fine. Uh, let me go through some other features about these two. So obviously, you know, you know, with the, with the Huion, this is, this is what it is, right? It doesn't have any special buttons or features. It's going to give you the experience that you've got. I've got my keyboard handy here, so I don't personally use those express keys, but, um, if you are somebody who's interested in them, let me go through the UX or the, the product experience of using these two. Again, I bought this in 2013. I have never. I'm going to be honest with you here. I've never used the express keys or the dial. Okay. The, the location of these is just not convenient for me personally. Uh, if I'm, if I'm drawing and, uh, I, I usually rest my hand here. So I have access to the full keyboard, but if I was to place my fingers here, there's no comfortable place for me to, to use these in such a way that I can just, uh, you know, press them easily. I mean, it, it, it's just not comfortable, right? And if you're doing art for many, many hours, comfort is a premium. It's, it's the most important thing. So overall, the, the issue here is that, you know, the, the dial, I mean, it technically works, but it's a little unresponsive. It's not something that you can like move very quickly through, right? It kind of does its job. You can click to select options, but that, I, that process of going click, 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 swirl. Yes, that's the size that I want. Uh, and then, you know, click finding here with your fingers, right? I don't want to look down at my tablet to know where my buttons are. So the idea that I would have to run my finger kind of braille style and find the, you know, button that I want, um, especially for down here. I mean, I'm just not going to press these buttons and I never have. And it's been, it's been eight, eight, nine years. So you're never going to find these buttons naturally with your fingers, unless you spend maybe a lot of time trying to get it to work. But honestly, the keyboard is more familiar to me. It always will be. And given that I've got dozens of buttons right here, like why would I bother trying to, you know, crane my hand around and learn that on the flip side, the intro small brings back something that I really, really, really like. So prior to buying this guy, I had what was called the bamboo fun, which was an, another Wacom tablet. It was basically their low end line before the Intuos line became really popular. The bamboo is basically the spiritual ancestor of this guy. The same amount of buttons on the top. The, the bamboo fun had a little wheel as well, or like a, some kind of, I guess it was a wheel. It had some sort of indicator in the middle. And it also had a mouse that you could use on top. So you could use this as like a mouse pad. Uh, again, never really used that. So to be honest for a hundred dollars, you're actually getting the best of everything here. I can actually see myself using these buttons. Right, they're nice, big, easy to hit. If I'm drawing, I can, you know, if I have to just bump something, maybe if there were four major tools I wanted to swap between, that's pretty, that's pretty natural. And I don't have to sacrifice my, my actual hand posture to do it. So, you know, if I'm here, I can just stick my ring finger out and just press that. Yeah, that's, that's doable. The Wacom Intuos Small, it's a hundred Australian dollars. It has all of the features that I want in a tablet in the form factor that I think is very nice. I mean, the comfort level for these, these are sort of like beveled edges. These rounded edges here are really, really nice. They're, they're, there's nothing rough about them. You can comfortably rest your hand over them. And I, I don't really feel any, any friction on the flip side, the Intuos Pro small from 2012, 2013, it's got a nice roll off to it, but it does have a hard edge after that, that roll off. So there's a subtle roll off just here, and then it becomes a hard edge. So I want to spend a little bit more time playing around with this and, um, I'll show you what I think. Okay. So my impressions of this so far really are that, uh, in the hand, it, it feels okay. It feels very responsive. Um, probably the most responsive. I guess I felt maybe this is, uh, because of the drivers, uh, and I was using, you know, older ones previously, but I feel like there's very, very little latency at all on this. This feels pretty good. Physically in my hand, uh, the pen is a little small. I mean, it's like kind of on the cramped side of things, 
Uh, it's not bad, but it's it's not as comfy as my um, normal Intuos. What I noticed when I was trying these out is that the pens are not compatible, right? This is an older technology. And so this pen, although it's much nicer, will not work with this one, uh, which is a bit of a letdown. I would honestly consider buying a new one that has this form factor with the technology that will work with this one because I really like the pen feel um, of the classic Pro. Whereas, yeah, this little guy, I mean, he's, it's fine. And this, this is kind of closer to like a biro feel. It's, it's just like a normal pen that you would buy at the shop for, you know, $7 or something like a premium pen. Um, but definitely not as, not as premium. There's definitely something interesting going on with this textured feel. I, I think in, in all honesty, as I use it, I feel like this texturing is kind of a benefit in terms of actually giving the, the, the pen uh, a feeling that has more control in it. Like I actually feel like as I press down, because there's a bit of grip on the, uh, on the surface, it's easier to control my mouse because I'm less likely to slip. This is something that's, I mean, it's new to me, but I could see how over time with use, it would be something that I would think of as a benefit rather than just something that's annoying or different. Okay, that's been my review of the Wacom Intuos Small. Honestly, uh, I would give this thing like an eight out of 10 for the price. It has a lot of the features that I've loved over the years, over the range, without any of the features that I don't love. And it's actually improved on some of the older devices that I paid two, three times the amount for. So honestly, if you don't have a tablet currently and you're looking to get into one, this is a great entry level tablet. And if you already have one and you're looking to get something for on the go or uh, yeah, something for school, definitely look into it. It's it's a really good option. I, I approve. I know mostly do pixel art. So uh, if you do pixel art, I mean, this is definitely going to be more than you need. Um, but if you do any kind of other digital art, you know, you, you'll probably crush it. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, in the time since I recorded this video and now me editing it, uh, we already crossed 50k subs. So that's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to give away the Intuos Small that I reviewed here in the video uh, to one of you viewers. And originally I had this idea about how I would give it away and I, I wasn't sure uh, what the criteria would be for that. But I realized we actually have another announcement that I wanted to make soon and it's probably worth just mixing these together at the same time. So drum roll. Uh, I will be running along with some members of the community uh, a game jam for Indie Tales. We'll be having the inaugural Indie Tales game jam in July this year, 2021. If you want a shot at winning the tablet or you just want to participate in the game jam, write your idea for a theme for the jam below. I will be shortlisting the themes that I like the most and posting the shortlist and I will choose a winner from that shortlist, but that will not necessarily be the theme for the jam that will be released on the day that we start. In the meantime, look forward to more of my content here on the channel, pixel art tutorials, devlogs from Insignia and my entry in Ludum Dare. I'll be recording all of that. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again. And uh, until next time.